Hi there, and welcome to my live video interview with the lovely Vanessa Francis. We are talking all about building your brand on Instagram. This is a live video. We're going to be going to it in a minute. I just wanted to let you know that for about the first 12 minutes, because we were live on Facebook, it is a little bit um, pixelated, but there is still great content in there. And uh, I don't want you to miss any of that, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. We're also going to have a free tip sheet in the description below that I did based on um, all the great information that Vanessa shared with us about Instagram and building your brand there and um, and also links to Vanessa's uh, information as well. So be sure that you set, look at all that in the description below. And um, this really was great. So if you're looking to up your game on Instagram, then wait no further and enjoy the interview with Vanessa. We're going to start. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. So welcome to the Interior Design Business Strategies Success Series. I'm your host, Claire Jefford, and my mission is to bring you a no-nonsense approach to success. Today we're chatting with Vanessa Francis from Vanessa Francis Design. And Vanessa is the principal uh, founder and founder of Vanessa Francis Design based just outside of Toronto. So we're actually in Vanessa's house right now in Milton, Ontario. She's known for creating beautiful and functional spaces for her clients. Her aesthetic is clean comfortable and effortless with just the right amount of color resulting in spaces that are timeless, classic and stylish like this fabulous living room just behind me. Her work has been featured in print in various publications including Canadian House and Home, Style at Home, Canadian Living, Lux Interiors and Design, Red Book and the Toronto Star. Online features include House Beautiful, My Domain, Style Me Pretty Living and Design Sponge. She writes the popular blog Decor Happy. If you're not subscribed, we're going to add a link and you can check that out as well. And that's where she shares her advice and inspiration so that everyone can have a home that makes them happy. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. So nice to be here. It's, it is. It's fun to be here. I'm a little bit nervous. <clears throat> you okay. do this all the time. This is my first <laughs> Facebook Live video. That's okay. Do you want to go ahead and tell <clears throat> us a little bit of background about yourself or about Instagram? Well, you pretty much <laughs> gave my background. I did. I'm an interior decorator. I've been doing this for about 10 years. Live in Milton, Ontario, outside of Toronto. Um, had some personal changes in my life last year, so I'm not taking on too many clients right now. I'm doing a lot of work in my own house, and I'm doing mostly consultations. So I'm doing a lot of consultations, and I do have a few projects on the go, which I will be sharing on Instagram soon. Um, that keeps me busy. But with regards to Instagram, I've been on Instagram for five years now. I went back to my first post to see when it was. I can't believe it's been five years. <clears throat> Instagram's been around uh, since 2010, so I came on board about a year and a half after. And so it's taken me five years to build up a following. And I don't have a huge following. I know people that started way after me, and they have 100,000 followers. And, you know, they're you doing... You still have a pretty good... Yeah, had a pretty good following there. Uh, yeah. 17,000? Over 17,000? Well, it's, yeah, it's it's okay. It's good. That's good. And I'm going to talk about how I did get that many followers, because I know there's people that started before me and, um, you know, still have a 1,000 or two followers. So, <clears throat> so I'll share with you how I've been able to grow my account, albeit over five years. Um, but Instagram, if you're not on it as a decorator, I hope after this um, video that you will start an account, because it has been really good for business for um, working with brands, we'll talk about that, for building my brand, for showing clients, potential clients when you're out, you can quickly pull out your phone and right there at your fingertips is everything there is, everything That's anybody true. wants to know That's about true. you, yeah. right? Like it's your professional portfolio plus a bit about your personal life. So we'll talk about the balance between that as well. But they don't have you don't have, to, don't have to point them to your blog or website. It's right there, yeah, all in one true. spot. Yeah. And there's a link to your a link to your blog blog or website should be on there as well. Yeah. So, um, sorry, so morning. That's okay. I'm just wondering, do you want us? Should we dive into some of the questions? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Madison, how are we doing over there? Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. good. Um, so we just want to start about getting started. Where what better place to start than the beginning? So. Uh, Let's talk about business account versus a personal account. So what should we be creating for Instagram? I think if you're a business and if you're watching, most of you are decorators, designers, stylists, you should definitely think about having a business account. 
I didn't have a business account until January of this year. The first uh, almost five years I was a personal account. I think it only came out last year anyways, having the option of having a business account. Right. So the benefit of that is, is um, analytics, as somebody commented on Claire's Facebook group, um, which is, is really good to see how many people, how many impressions do you have on your photo? Mm -hmm. Like, even though I have 17,000 followers, some photos get 25,000 impressions. I don't know That's how that sense. happens. I think it happens because of, um, I, it ends up on the Explore page, where other people, non-followers, find me. Okay. But it also... Um, shows you how many people saved your photo. It shows you what kinds of posts people are liking because they're saving it right. to tell you that to post that more often. If it's people love kitchens, anything to do with kitchens, yes. people love. Yes, especially kitchens. Vanessa's kitchens. Oh my gosh, Claire. <laughs> um, it's true. But the other reason too is right on there, there's a clickable link to um, engage with you, whether it's by phone or email. I don't have my phone number on there. I don't want people calling me from around the world, but I do have a direct link on my, if, you, if you're following me, you can go to my account and and how you know that people have a business account is it'll say something like mine has professional service. I've seen it where people have interior design, interior designer. It's whatever your Facebook page, whatever you've um, categorized yourself as on your Facebook business page, that's what will show up here. And sorry, Vanessa, is that in the bio? In the bio. That's what you write in the bio. Well, no, you don't write it. It actually that's populates. It oh, populates. Okay. Once you click on the button, and to get there, it's really easy. There's a little sunrise, sun picture in the right corner. You click on that, and there's a setting that says, um, well, mine says switch back to personal account. So it must say, make this into a business account. Mm -hmm. So the benefits are, as I said, analytics, but also sure, yeah. having people contact you right away. On mine, there's a, an email button. So people can direct link from my page to email me. And that's what we should be putting in that little bio section. Yeah, email or call. I chose to just have email only. Okay. Some people, yeah. if you look at other designers, they have a call button. Oh, okay. I don't want a call button. I don't want people calling me. Right, yeah. Fair no, no offense. <laughs> I shouldn't really say that, should I? <laughs> no, this that's This is going to be seen by other than decorators, right? But that's okay, gonna, because okay. you don't, you know, it's, I, I personally like it when people email me first and I can email yeah. them back and set up a phone call. So yeah. I that's think, okay. I think um, first contact to email is always best. I like that better. Yeah. I do. Um, so, so yeah, so that's so business so, account has worked for me. Um, and if you do switch back to personal, I'll lose all my analytics. Analytics. So therefore, I'm going to keep it as a business account. Right. Um, and that's important to note, Vanessa, because I find that a lot of times we do so much stuff, whether it's on whether it's social media or whether it's your blog or your website. And a lot of times we just don't take the time, or maybe we don't know how, to go back and view the analytics. Mm -hmm. So I mean, in order to make sure that whatever you're doing is actually working, you want to be checking those analytics and uh, making sure that, you know, you are getting that engagement and that people are posting and, and you know, I guess it, it just makes sense, right, mm -hmm. to, in mm -hmm. order to do that. So you're saying business account, but people could still have a personal account, but just... You know, I, I know people that have both, and I would just say have one account. It's, it's hard enough to keep up one account, mm -hmm. let alone a personal... I mean, you could have a personal account and make it private, and it's just for family and friends. But I know people that have a personal account that's not private, and they have the same followers on both accounts, and they're posting the same things. Yeah, so I would. The point. I, it's it's a lot of work, yeah. and it is a lot of work to to do one social media well. I've chosen to do Instagram. I just send my posts to Facebook and Twitter, but I'm not really on Facebook and Twitter that much. Um, whereas Claire is on on Facebook yeah. more often than she is on Instagram. Yeah. So, um, that's so, going to change after this, after today. Yes, 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 okay. you're going to get on it. <laughs> okay, so are you happy with that? We think we covered most of that in terms of business account versus personal? Yeah, we're going to talk about names though, right? Yes, okay. we're going to go right to names next. Okay. So we're going to talk about naming your account. And um, again, when we were uh, in Orlando, I had my account that was called creating underscore contrast underscore designs. Because why? Because... That's my big business name, and I didn't realize, you know, what I was doing wrong or that there was sort of a faux pas in there that was happening. So, Vanessa said, nope, that's not very good, and you're going to explain now why that was not good to do with underscores and dots and all those kind of fancy things. I just think it makes it more complicated if you have underscores or dashes or periods in there. Um, people are trying to search you in the search bar. Uh, you might not come up right away because, oh, where was the dot? Was it at the beginning? Where was the hyphen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can just not have any of that, the best thing to have is your business name, which is the name at the top of your 
Instagram um, feed that is your name on Instagram is to have your to have your your name but having said that I don't have my name I have decor happy on it yeah and the reason I have decor happy is because that was my blog name back in 2009 so how many years eight years now um, and people know me as decor happy people even call me at decor happy at events it's really weird right <laughs> you're decor happy um, but it has a nice ring to it I guess it does so I did change my name I thought well, you know what I'm gonna change it to Vanessa Francis um, it was already taken, so I think I chose Vanessa J. Francis, which is my Twitter name. So I did. I changed it over from Decor Happy out over after a couple of years to Vanessa J. Francis, and I lost a lot of followers. In a few days, people were unfollowing me, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back to Decor Happy. People know me as that. Um, so do you think as people saw that, they were like, we don't know who this Vanessa J. Yeah, Francis is? Yeah, I think is, so. They didn't because, know who, well, they're yeah. following me, so they wouldn't know who I am, but maybe they didn't link it together that right. it was the same so person. once you've landed on a name and it works for you, leave it. That, right, right, yes, and don't make it too complicated. And if you can, um, put, start off by putting your business name there. So, for example, I should have put Vanessa Francis Design up there. But also in my bio have my name, Vanessa Francis. Right. So many people I see have their business name as their Instagram name, but they don't have their name anywhere on there. Right. And I want to tell you a funny story. Yes, please do. <clears throat> and Kelly knows it's Kelly. So I called her Kelly. Yeah. Inez knows that I'm talking about her, but there's an account. Um, it's Kelly Hopter Interiors and beautiful work. I've been following her since she started on Instagram. But, so her business name is Kelly Hopter Interiors. So I assumed her name was Kelly. She didn't have her, real, her name on there in the, in the bio. Right. So on, when I'm commenting, oh, great work, Kelly. Looks stunning, Kelly. And so was everybody else. And then about a month ago, she puts her real name on there. Her real name is Inez. But um, there's a funny story behind the name Kelly Hopter Interiors, and she's not going to change that. That's her business name. But also right. have your real name on there, because people will assume that your business name, the first mm -hmm. name is your first name, but it wasn't. In her case, Kelly Hopter Interiors. Her name was Inez. Um, go follow her, by the way. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. work. Um, and she said I could talk about that. But good, good example. Uh, if you don't have your name in your bio, bio. put your name in there. So makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So that's good to know. Um, so let's talk. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes go. go. I want to talk about the whole bio. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So make sure you have a good picture of yourself. Don't have, don't leave the avatar. Don't leave the egg as they call it. Um, don't put your, I don't think you should put your logo in there. I think people want to see a face. I, do. I agree. Some people, I, I read uh, on a course I did years ago, to, you can put your logo in there, but I wouldn't put your logo. Put mm. your face. People want a personal, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. They want to be able to connect with somebody rather than right. something. Right. So technical difficulties, please say my. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but we're back on track. So, okay. Do you remember where we were? Yes, I do. We were talking about the whole bio. Okay. And um, what to put in the bio. So I think we covered that. The link was where we left off. Okay. Um, having a link. So, for example, if you're um, selling something like Claire, selling something on your site, that's a great uh, spot to put a link to that lead page so people can actually purchase something from you. So, um, or your latest thing, so you have like a one, your makeover challenge? Or? Yes, it's really old. It's okay. from like a month ago now. Right. I haven't, I did the blog post since, but I, I kept it in there because, you know, it's, I want that, I want that blog post to get lots of, um, traction, traction, because okay. I had sponsors for that, so. And how do people know to go there? They just, they just know? Well, no, because I didn't know. If you're, if you're doing a post, you'll say link in bio. People do hashtag link in right. bio, okay. link in profile. To, to point people there. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. that's good to know. I'm still or, good medicine. Still good? Okay. Or you can use your story for that. We'll talk about stories in a minute. Okay, good. Okay. Any uh, pressing questions coming out of what we're talking about as such? Um, there was one. So say you were to change um, the link in your bio for each post per se to go back to like a blog. Mm -hmm. um, right. Should you keep having to change it for every post you do, or should you have like just one permanent link always in okay. your bio? Sorry. So the question is, just in case you didn't hear Madison there, was should you, and we kind of touched on that, I guess, really, was should you have the same link in there, or should we be changing it up, which I think you said 
Let's you change, can it change it. You can change it up. Change yeah. it up. You can just have a general link to your blog. I, I usually have that. But if there's a post that you want traction on, um, uh, you, yeah, you can change it every week or every as often as you want. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay. So can we move on now to the quality of photos and images? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. okay. When to post and what to post. Isn't that a, Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll go that. there. We should talk about that Okay. First, we'll go there. Right? Okay. Let's go there okay. first. Okay. So we're okay. going to talk about what to post, when to post. And how often do we post? So do you want to start with what to post? Okay, I think I might have said this earlier, but as designers, we uh, Instagram was made for us because we are we're doing beautiful work. And so we are going to post photos of our work mostly. That's the main uh, the main photos on your it's all about images, right? Your it's images, about, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be a styled, you know, professionally photographed shot iPhones now take amazing photos, and I don't get half of my projects shot. I, I hardly do. In fact, next week I'm going to go back and visit some of the ones and get some shots of this cool built-in that I did. I didn't right. get a photograph, but I want to go back with my iPhone and get some photos. So, so basically what you're photoing is, is your work. Uh, sorry, what you're posting is your work, as well as people do want to see a bit about your personal life. So every now and then, post a photo of your dog. My dog. She's if you have one, dog. <laughs> uh, or your dog, or your kids, or your husband, or or something that you're doing that's interesting and fun. And how, how, sorry, how often? Like, how often are we interjecting those? Once a month? Once a week? I, I think it's up to you what you do okay. with that. I, for me, I hardly ever post personal photos. I hardly ever do selfies, so I'm really surprised I'm sitting here talking <laughs> to people. She's doing great. Um, because I don't like doing selfies, but I would say it's up to the person, but. Most keep it 80% maybe business, you know, projects, sourcing, fabric schemes, mm -hmm. whatever it is to do with your business and your work. And then the rest, keep that, you know, your cute kids or your cute dog. Yeah. And can I just say on that too, I find what people really love, like you just said there, Vanessa, is like, you know, if you see like a fabric palette and you're out and about and you're putting something together for a client, you snap a picture of it, you make sure it looks good and, um, or tiles that you're doing. Like I find that that actually gets a lot of engagement mm -hmm. and, you know, people are excited about it. Not, over, not only, not only do, um, you know, potential clients want to see it, but so do other designers, you know, they're like, Oh, what fabric is that? You know, where did you, or where are you? You know? Mm -hmm. So I find those are, and those are so quick to do, mm -hmm. but let's just talk as well, just for a second when we're talking about what to post. When we post, I know you were saying to me, like, you spend a lot of time on filtering or however however you crawl. Maybe Sorry, not my dog's biting my toes. I have a puppy, <laughs> and she's biting my toes right now. So, I don't know, Madison, can you take her away? Maybe. I wouldn't say put her in her crate because she'll start barking. Sorry, we have a puppy. She's really cute, she's but so cute. she bites yeah. toes. But just lot. lightly. She wasn't like... <laughs> did you feel about. it too? I did, yeah. Okay. Sorry, so the question was... Um, the question is, so when you... Because I know, again, like when, when you were helping me in Orlando, we were, you know, we'd post something, but then you'd say, okay, make sure you crop it just right, right. make sure you brighten it. Like, how, how should they be looking? Oh, so photos. Okay. Um, so quality of photos. That is the key thing uh, for Instagram. If you don't have a photo, like say you're out somewhere and it's dark or the room's dark, don't post it because it's best to take quality photos during the day in natural light. No amount of editing is going to make that photo look clear and crisp. It's going to look all pixelated and grainy. Right. So, but you can post it at night, but just take it during during the day if you can in natural light. Okay. Um, but as designers, um, stylists, decorators, whatever, um, the quality of our photos is, is key. Right, of course. And I see so many people that post grainy, or dark photos or our TMI like too many photos of their breakfast or their lunch and as Laurel Burns <laughs> said as Laurel Burns said in her she says people don't care about what you do I do think they do and there has to be some connection um, with you as a person and your brand but I think there can be overkill and some people do yeah. too much of that I think that's when stories come in should we talk about stories maybe or uh, you know before we will get to stories but oh, before we jump there we're gonna talk about when to post yes we're gonna talk we would like to talk about when to post right and how often and how often okay so i try to post every day but that doesn't happen if you look at my account i think i posted three times in the last week and i think that's good i think if you do every other day good um, every day is even better some people post three or four times a day and i think that's overkill that's too much if people are following three thousand accounts and you're posting four photos 
I just think that's too much for anybody to take in and, and see anyway. Yeah. So And I, is it actually benefiting? Like are you doing all this work to post four times a day on Instagram when you when you could be getting just as much engagement and as much benefit out of doing two or one or two? Oh one. Just I mean? One really good photo that you've okay. taken time to edit, as you said. Um, you've taken it in good light, you've edited it. Uh, I don't use any um, apps to edit my photos. I use the filter, not the filters, I don't use any filters. Don't use filters on your photos on Instagram. Oh, okay. Use the editing functions like brightness and there's one call I think adjust where if you're taking a photo of a kitchen and the counter looks slightly off, you can adjust that. So many photos I see, if it's a bookshelf, it's it's often, it really bothers me. It needs to be straight. And it's just an easy little thing that you just move the button along and you can straighten things out. Yeah. So having things that are straight, bright, and don't saturate your photos. It's nice to, I think if you're going to have a photo, it's best to have it lighter than darker, like lighter and brighter, so you can actually turn up um, the brightness on it. Right. So, and there's, a, there's one called Sharpen as well. So if your photo isn't that sharp, or maybe you have an updated uh, phone camera, you can sharpen the photo a bit as well. But photos are key. Um, so I would say quantity, quality over quantity for sure. Yep. And not posting every day is a must, maybe every other day. And so when to post. I, fi I find for me the best time to post is around 8 o'clock at night. I think it's the same with Facebook or any other social media really. Most people have had dinner and they're sitting around you know, and yeah, there's a scroll. Bed, yeah, or... so they're scrolling from so from eight till ten. For me, that's where I get the most engagement. Eight to ten during the week. Now, having said that, on the weekends, I think any time on the weekend, because people are you know they're around, they're not you know don't have their they're not working. Um, or maybe some of us are working, but. Um, why do you I look find at me when you say that? Why do you, why do you think I'm working? We both work weekends, <laughs> okay. I know that. So, uh, for example, my last photo, I posted it Saturday. I think I said, happy Saturday or something like that. And I got a lot of likes, more so than I had in the last few um, posts. And I think it was, it was a Saturday. I think it was a rainy, no, it was a Saturday. Sorry, it was a sunny Saturday. Sometimes when it's rainy out, I get more engagement because yeah. people are, aren't out and about. They're yeah. actually... Scrolling, scrolling where we are, right? Yes. Where they are, but. right? Scrolling through their feed. Yeah. Um, so I would say weekends, anytime, Friday nights, and Friday and Sunday nights are, are better. I find than Saturday nights for some reason. Right. That's funny about you saying about yeah. Friday because I find with Facebook for Facebook, and that's what the only thing I can really relate it to. I find that the eat like a Friday night or a Saturday kind of afternoon. It, I think it depends what you're going to actually post. Mm -hmm. But I also think that that's when I find there's kind of less engagement because people are probably out in the day busy doing things. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see like with different, maybe with different platforms if there's, you know, different times that are, are better than yeah. others, right? Yeah, I think too with Instagram now, what, they're, what you've noticed in Instagram is in your feed, you're not seeing everybody's latest posts. Instagram is using algorithms just like Facebook. Mm -hmm. So they're deciding what you're going to see based on what you've liked and commented and engaged on. So... Um, so I think this photo, for example, I think it showed up in people's feeds. Which is this kitchen. Do you want to just turn it around and show people so they know what you're oh. doing? So that's been oh, sorry. kitchen. My last post. I'm sorry. <laughs> Assuming people can see. Where we are right now. Oh, my kitchen. So, so for example, I think it, it uh, showed up later in people's feeds because I got likes all the way into Sunday. So usually you get likes within the first hour or two of posting, but yeah. with this one, for some reason, I was getting a ton of likes. It had longevity. Oh, was, longevity. Yeah. And I think it was because um, Instagram decided, because of the comments or because of something, their algorithms that they use, which yeah. is a real mystery to everybody, yeah. um, decided to keep putting it in people's feeds. So they choose what's going in your feed. Because they see that other people are liking it, so they want to put it in more people's feed and yes. then hopefully create more engagement. Right. Okay, good. Yeah. So how often? Okay. Um, Madison, any questions on that? I know Madison's also watching the dog. She's doing so well. <laughs> um, can you share your view on branding your company versus branding you as a brand? Example, on, inter on Instagram as Danny Chan Interior Design instead of Chan D Designs. So... Sorry, so branding your... So branding your company instead of branding you yourself as the brand. Does that kind of maybe go back to what you were saying about having some of your personal photos in there, but mainly keeping it to your, your business? Mm -hmm. And also, because we were going to get to this as well, we may have touched on it a little bit already. Um, that was Danny Chan asking, I believe, um, in terms of what to... 
you know, if you're building that brand, let's, let's, can we jump there? Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about the building a brand because that's obviously a lot of what we're, we're focusing in on here. Mm-hmm. So in terms of building your brand, what to post, and Vanessa and I talked about this a little bit earlier as well. Um, so I'll let Vanessa take it away and talk about what you should be, we kind of talked about what we should be posting, but let's dig a little bit deeper into that so you can build your brand. Yeah, so I think, I think a pers- pers- first of all, a person's brand is what they stand for, what they want to be known for. That's what I think a brand is. Um, and it's kind of like when we're in, when we're in, we're in Orlando, mm-hmm. and Libby Langdon said to have your sound bite, like your yes, two or three is. words that describe you and how you want to be known. So for me, it's clean spaces with a bit of color and nothing fussy, nothing glam, not Kelly Wurstlerish. You know, just I have my own look. Yeah, it's it's what I'm known for. Just like Amber Interiors, I'm sure most of you following Amber. Um, her her look. If you saw a photo in your feed pop up, you would know right away that it's her photo. It's her work because she has a, has a look about her. So about her work. So I would say um, so to figure out to find what that look is of your work and stick to that. So for example, if I would I wouldn't really post a Kelly Wurstler picture in my feed because. I love her, I love her work, I think it's, but it's not me, it's not what my clients, why my clients would hire me for, they hire me to create something similar to what I've done. It may be confusing to people that see your feed and go, oh, look at all this pretty white picture, and all of a sudden they see something that's like, oh, that doesn't, that's quite kind of awesome. It doesn't go with it. Right. Like if you look at Studio McGee, and I'm sure all of you are following, following Studio McGee, um, their, their feed is so almost homogeneous, I would say. It's all, it's not all the same, it's all different and beautiful, but it's, um, there's, a, there's a thread of, through it, that it's clean spaces with just well done, well edited. Um, yeah. And I guess it's figuring out what that, what is, that is for your brand and, and portraying those sorts of photos, as well as having a little bit about you. So for Danny, having a little bit about you, your personal life and, and your work, um, but mostly your work. Not so sure mainly just keeping it, no, because I think that's important you answered the question because like, because we talked, as I said, we talked about this a little bit earlier and if you really like, you know, if you're really into say just shabby chic or ship lab or whatever, for example, then you're probably not going to post something that's really dark and not that we're going to do dark photos yeah. anyway, but like industrial looking or, you know, right. very rustic. So, you know, even though you may like that, mm-hmm. maybe don't put that in your feed in Instagram because that may be a little bit of a, a distortion between what you're actually trying to convey to people of what your brand is. Right. 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 A good example when you were talking about ship black and that kind of thing, mm. shabby chic. Um, I don't know why, but there's a account called Kim Power Style, and I haven't met Kim um, in person, but I've I've messaged her and we've talked. Anyways, House and Home Magazine came to shoot her house, and they they found her. Yeah, her home, home is beautiful. So if you look at her feed, Kim Power Style on Instagram. Um, I think she changed, she used to be our house and she changed it to her name. Good call, Kim. But if you look at her feed, it's all photos, of mostly of her home. Different angles, but it's all the same look. It's beautiful. It's white interior, interiors, with a bit of wood and wicker, but a beautiful aesthetic. Can you just turn it? Just, even oh. though you guys probably can't really see very well, oh, but sorry. just to... So, um, if you can see that. So, House and Home Magazine, because they were here at my house last week shooting my kitchen. Uh, we were just chatting and they found Kim through her Instagram feed. Um, the producer of the videos for House and Home Magazine was following her and came, ac- well, came across her feed and started following her and, and thought, wow, nice. I want to share this with my, with our um, subscribers and, and uh, YouTube yeah. followers. So she has a very clear aesthetic and if she posts anything that's not there, people would say, well, what's going on? So just kind of figuring out what your style is, what your aesthetic, what your look is. I think to me that's what it is. Maybe there's something more to it than that. Um, and just being true to that and sticking to that, um, and I hope that answered your question. I guess if there's any more, we can talk about it at the end, how people can reach me. Yes, or, yeah, or, we'll yeah. talk about that Okay, for sure. Um, so yeah, so I think with building the brand, so can we just, while we're talking about brands, can we just jump, I know we've got some other stuff we want to talk about in between, but we're just getting so excited here. Uh, our light's going down a little bit too, our natural light looks like it's starting to, do we still look okay? Are we okay? Yeah, you're good. Can you turn okay. the lanterns on? Yeah. Where's that? Right there. Um, thank you, Madison. Um, so yeah, so yeah. how to, what, what, okay, so a couple things. What about using Instagram for brands? Because that is one of the things that you do very well at in terms of your blog, your Instagram account. Um, you get sponsored for different things. Can you talk a little bit about how you've, you've built your brand and how do you get, 
how do you get in front of brands? Like, what do you what do you do? Is it the hashtags? Uh, well, there's there's two sides to that. For example, um, let's take a brand like West Elm, for example. That's how I kind of how I've grown my following too by having brands like West Elm with millions of followers regram my photo. So if I purchase something from West Elm, I'm a big West Elm fan. Uh, for example, my llama, you can't see it. You can't see my llama, but I have this llama on my counter from West Elm. So when I pho photographed it, I probably, I don't know if I did in this one. I think I might have tagged West Elm, but I try to tag the brands mm -hmm. that I want to engage with. I don't tag every brand because your photo would be um, covered in, in uh, tags. We haven't really talked about we'll tags. Talk about, we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah. So um, therefore, West Elm will see the photo and they might message me and say, hey, we love your photo. Can we share it on our platform, on social media or on their website? So I've had um, some of my work on their website for the product that I'm, I'm sharing. So, um, so that's one way to get the brands to notice you. Right. Um, and you but, just hashtag. How do you know what their hashtag is? You just oh, so for first? example, my West Elm. Right. And most just most retailers yeah. have their own hashtag. So for West Elm, it's my West Elm. For Home Sense in Canada, it's my Home Sense. Okay. Good. To know. For um, uh, Indigo, you know, our bookstore is Indigo Faves. So most retailers, big ones anyways with big followings on Insta, those are the ones that you want to, you okay. know, start tagging. Um, so do a little research first, sorry Vanessa, to kind of see who you want to tag and what their hashtag is so you make sure that they are hopefully finding. Yeah. Right? Well, you're going to tag them. That's how they're first going to find you. Yes. A tag, yes. but also the hashtag as well. So you're doing both. You're tagging and you're hashtagging. Oh, okay. What's the difference? Okay, the difference. <laughs> I'm so fresh okay. to this. Okay, so a tag. So a tag is um, when you're posting a photo, there's a button that says, do you want a tag or a tag? I'm not in a photo, so I can't see. It says tag. So you can click on, for example, if you click on my last photo and click the little button in the left corner, all my tags will come up. Show that as well. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oops. All my tags will come up. So you tag the chairs, you tag the countertop, you tag not the, the chairs. Okay. They are no, no. Okay. Or the so place. House and Home magazine I tag because this is going to be on a House and Home video, the kitchen. I wouldn't tag them if it, that wasn't going to happen. If I was just showing my kitchen and, and they hadn't approached me or I wasn't going to be there, I wouldn't tag them. But people do. I see people tagging magazines to get their attention, and I wouldn't do that. I would tag brands. So for example, I I got these. Uh, tea towels from William Sonoma Yorkdale. Uh, my knobs, and these are some brands I've worked with. And by working with, I mean um, we've had a reciprocal agreement where I blog and share on social media in exchange for product or a discount on product. So, for example, the Southstone uh, South countertop. Um, my flowers. I always get these beautiful flowers from Fiori and Oakville. I always tag them. So, um, so that way they see your photo. And the photo ends up in their stream of photos, if that makes sense. It's hard to do without doing a webinar where I can show you things, so it's a little bit that's different. The next, that's coming next, maybe, right? Okay. Um, so yeah. that's so tagging. So there's so if you're sharing something, you can either tag them, which is I think the better route to do, so it shows up on the photo. And for example, if I clicked Fiori Oakville, for example, <coughs> I click on them, then I go to their photos of them. My photo should appear there, and there it is. There's my kitchen in their stream, and it stays there until they delete it or decide not to have it there. So, um, so that's tagging, but you can also at somebody. That's with the at sign and their name in your, in your caption. If people are sharing my work, I'd rather have them tag me so that it's there permanently, because after they at you, you're going to not know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go away. So right? you do this when you first upload the picture, and yeah. then you hashtag Vanessa Francis Design, or you at... Francis. Well, I'm saying tag. Oh, tag. So tagging okay. is better than adding. If well, that's confusing me. Can Sorry. you turn that around? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw myself on her laptop, and I'm such a novice at this. I hope this is going okay. You're doing fabulously. <laughs> okay. You're doing great. Have to do She's another one great. when I'm not. Right? So She's doing great. Um, so, anyways, if someone, if you're sharing somebody's work, like a designer, and or someone's sharing your work, I'd rather, I'd rather. Um, tag them and I'd rather have my work tagged because then it gets saved into the photos of you button which is this button here this button here which looks like a square with a person in it is all the photos of you it's all people that have shared my work over the last four or five years or um, most of people have shared my work so oh, okay. so and it gets saved there it's always there 
Whereas an act, you're not going to know. It's going to go away. Right. Right. So, okay. And so many times people do share my work, but I don't see it because it's, it's in an app. And I posted something, so I get all these likes, and I've missed that they shared my photo. Oh, so I okay. never know, and it's forgotten. And that's probably because people just don't understand all the ins and outs of every single platform that there is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I that was clear. Okay. No, that's that good. good. Madison, okay. how are you doing over there with the dog? I'm good. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No. Is she biting you? No. Okay. okay. You know what? There's a treat bag in there. The big treat bag. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So using Instagram to get noticed by brands, and we just talked about how to tag someone in the brand. Uh, okay. This is just on with the brands, though. Yes. Um, obviously, the more followers you have on Instagram, the more brands are going to work with you. So if you've only got 300 followers, maybe you're not going to get anything reciprocal because they want to see you share it on your platform. Of course. And the more followers you have, the better it is on any platform. Yes. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they want to get the most exposure, right? Right. So that's why it's important to build up your build up your following. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so actually, we, for time, what's your phone say? I have 141. Wow. We're already, we're already 141. Wow. Okay. See how fast it goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. Okay, so let's talk about um, when someone follows you, do you follow back? And just kind of off of that as well, I think some people say they notice that some people follow them, and then if they follow them back, then after a few days, that person's unfollowed them. So right. let's Two talk parts. about that kind of strategy okay. a little bit. So we missed the so whole hashtag thing, but we'll come back to that. <gasps> oh, we do need to talk about hashtags. Yeah, I'll talk about that after. Oh, gosh. Since we're here okay, now. remind me. That's a big one. <laughs> um, okay, so do you have to follow people back? No. As you can see, I have 72,000 followers. I'm following, I don't know, 2,000 or something. So you can look at their feed, and that's what I do. I look at their feed, and I scroll through, and I think, do I want to follow this person? I know it sounds kind of hard, and... But that's, I don't have time to go th to look at even the ones that I'm following, yeah. I'm following 2,000 or whatever. And you, so, want, sorry, and you want things to come up in your feed that you like. Yes. Right? You don't yeah. want follow someone just for the sake of following them and then yes. you don't really like what they're posting. Right. Right? Yeah. My sister asked me the other day because she has a business um, a, a account and she said, do we have to follow everybody? I said, no, you have to follow everybody. And if they're private, I definitely don't follow them unless they're a friend or family member. I'll follow them, but I don't follow private accounts uh, or, it's, or it's a client. I do... That's time. No, I don't. I don't follow every client, to be honest. Um, and why? Why would you follow a client? Um, yeah, a actually, now that I think about it, the only clients I follow are also, for example, dance moms. So I know them socially, other than a client. Right. So that's the only reason, only way I would follow them. I wouldn't follow them if there's a client only. Right. Yeah. But I imagine too something you know is going on on that kind of topic in terms of dance moms or or personal. Wouldn't it be good though in a way so they if they are following you and then I don't know as you said maybe you don't want to follow them but you know that's a good way of getting clients right because then they'll be like oh my gosh you got to follow Vanessa she's so and so's mom you got to see what she does, does happen, right? right yeah they tell people to follow me but I don't necessarily follow them right back. okay yeah. got you okay yes. um, so okay so the question was do you follow back no not necessarily no. and what why do some people follow you and then they're gone yeah I think that ha it happens to me a lot and there's a different apps you can use to check who's unfollowing you. I use Instrac, I-N-S-T-R-A-C-K. It's an app. I believe it was free, but then you have to pay for different things if you want to upgrade. So I can see, I don't check it often, but like every week or two, I'll go in and see, oh, so-and-so unfollowed me. And it's very surprising. Like I'll think, wait a second, why did you follow me? I know you. I've met you. Why, why are you unfollowing me? It hurts a little, doesn't it? It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> So then I go right back and I follow them. Do you? Isn't that terrible? No. <laughs> not all the time. No, 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 I don't do it all the time. But sometimes it does. It hurts. I see when I see people unsubscribe sometimes. I think, why did you unsubscribe? It's, I know you. Take you. it personally. I yeah. know. So, um, but, you know, we can't take it personally. People just can't be everyone yes. following everyone all the time, right? So, right. But what I was going to say is that a lot of times when that happens and people unfollow you right away, it's because they're using an app. There's, and we'll talk about this, there are apps, and don't do this, but I'm telling you it's out there. People use apps to, number one, get followers. Number two, get likes. And I'll give you an example. I'll we'll talk about one yep. that I know about that just happened. And also to follow and then they unfollow. And those are all done automatically with these apps. I've never used them. They scare me. I don't want people, I don't want my account liking things I wouldn't necessarily like. Right. You're not um, in control. It's the yeah. app that's kind of doing it the way you've programmed it or something. Or no, no. Well, you tell them, for example, like all photos with this hashtag. You can set it up. Oh, I think that's how it works. Okay, okay. But for example, there's a well-known, I won't say a name, Canadian designer that has like 100,000 followers. And I know that they bought followers because 
but then two days they had that many followers and that wouldn't happen. Oh, uh, right. It right. takes time okay. to yes. build a following. Yes. Because if um, you see someone that has four pictures and 5,000 followers, it's like, there's what a disconnect. There. There's a disconnect. Yes. And why would you want to do that? Because the whole point of Instagram is engagement and mm -hmm. connecting. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Yeah. But I just want to show you guys, if we have time, uh, if you go onto my account and you click the, um, the button under email that looks like it's a square with a person's body in it, and click on this photo here. This is a photo of standard plumbing. I shouldn't, I shouldn't call them out, but I'm not following them. I don't know. They're in the States. Well, they, they um, shared this photo of my kitchen. So I, they added me. They put at decor happy. So that's how I knew. They didn't, they didn't tag me. They just did an at. And sorry, I'm you're, trying to see the comments. You're confusing she's me. She's with the dog. Sorry, you guys are both confusing me here. It's chaos here, people. No, okay. Okay. Um, anyways, within like 30 seconds of me watching this photo, oh. it got like 700 likes. So obviously, these people, standard plumbing. So don't follow them. Standard dot plumbing in the U.S. have bought their 55,000 followers and bought their likes. Oh. And there's no comments. Why would there be no comments on my kitchen? Because they're not real people. Because they're, they're not real people. And then go look at the likes. Click on the like button and you'll see all these people from different parts of the world with no, no avatar, which means it's that, you know, no face and all weird people that wouldn't follow me, whereas my likes are all mostly other designers, decorators, yeah. and that type of thing. Yeah. So um, I shouldn't say that. There's also potential clients, and I have found clients this way, so don't get me wrong. Oh, good. I was just going to ask you yeah. that, too. So you yes. find that some clients are finding you through Instagram Absolutely. saying, yeah. wow, I love your work. Yeah. And how, how do they, how might they stumble upon you? Um, how do they stumble upon someone? Well, it might work the other way around. They might have Googled me and then gone to my website and ended up here oh, and then seen okay. my work. Because I share way more on here than I do on my outdated website. Yes. I haven't really yes. updated in a while. I'm the same with the blog. It's, it's hard to keep up on it with yeah, everything. You can't do everything. And even right? my portfolio is outdated. So, um, so they stumble upon me and they scroll through. And um, so no line like, followers, sorry. No line followers. followers. Don't do these apps. Do it organically. You know, we have to do things patiently. Things take time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just the way that it is. But if you do it properly, then it, it works better and it's going to work in your favor, right? I mean, brands are going to contact you if they look and if they figure it out and they, they realize that, you know, it's, it's bogus, yeah. right? I don't understand why people do it. It's crazy. Yeah. But it happens a lot. And you'll see it. You'll see somebody, the same people who you're not following, and I can think of one comes to mind, who always likes my photo because I always use the same hashtag. And I know they're not following me. I know they've never seen the photo, but it's the automatic liking because right. I use this hashtag, Pursue Pretty or whatever, and they've liked all photos that have the hashtag. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't okay. do that. Vanessa Francis says, don't do it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's talk about hashtags because okay. people will probably get mad at me if I forget to mention okay. hashtags. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to just see where we are. I want to see some photos because Madison's babysitting the dog. Oh, <laughs> is she okay? Yeah. So she I just want to see what the, uh, what they, what's yeah, happening, but I don't okay. want to be hearing the comments. You see, if you just, because I know we're gonna wrap it up soon. Okay, so no. let's see. What, there's quite a few comments, but okay. So let's talk about hashtagging. Okay. So if you saw my account. You saw my, yeah, saw my account. Um, I use hashtags. I'm one of those people that uses all 30 hashtags. Okay. And I didn't start doing that if you go back until, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And I realized people, other people were doing it. And these people have like 50,000 followers. And I thought, well, I'm going to get on that train too. So I have um, figured out for me which ones um, I get lots of engagement on. And so I've come up with 30 hashtags. Now, there's ones like interior design or design that have like 20 million photos when you click on that hashtag. So that's when there are people aren't going to necessarily see your photo because it's such a fast moving stream of photos because mm -hmm. 20, 20 million people, people are adding yeah. to it. Yeah. So what I would do is, I, here's a little trick, getting all my tricks away. Tips I would maybe use hashtag design in the um, caption and then after five minutes delete it for another one. A less, a less used one. So you put it in the caption yep. and then you delete it? You can go in and change your caption. So I would use one that has oh. less. So yeah. it'll show up in the design and then it'll yes. show up in another one that you think is more relevant or will get more views maybe yes. because it has less yes. people following or ha using yeah. the hashtag. And it's just playing around, just looking at the hashtags. I mean, I can't tell you. You can look at see which ones I've done, but please don't. I know people that have used exactly my hashtags, but I've, you know, I've picked these. You can 
find your own. And it, I wouldn't use the same ones every time. For example, if I'm doing um, a bookcase, I would use shelfie. If I'm showing flowers, I would use flowerstagram. There's one specific to whatever um, photo w that you're showing. So there's and some that are relevant, more relevant remember, than others. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember you talking about the shelfie. Like, where where do people go to find these hashtags? Like, is there somewhere? Is there is there somewhere to go to where you kind of say, okay, I'm going to post Benjamin Moore paint or, I don't know, like how do we, how do we know? I would never know unless you told me about hashtag Shelfie that it even exists. It's just, I it just, I just, it just, it just, not common sense, but you kind of go to, you go stuff. to the search button and you start typing in things and see which ones, like if you type, start typing in design, you'll see um, design, designer, interior design, decor, home decor, instant decor. There's, okay. And at the top when you search, there's, they list a whole bunch as well. So from there, okay, from the so one you're you... in, you can see other choices as well. Okay. There's also, if you Google it, Google best hashtags for interior design, I'm sure something comes up. Yeah. There is one, I saw not for interior design specific, but just hashtags in general. But in, I mean, when you're traveling on vacation, use um, from where I stand or you know, these big ones, um, a few, um, there's a whole bunch of explore ones for travel okay. or travel BC, wherever you are. So if you're traveling, don't use, you're not going to use design hashtags. You're going to use right. ones for traveling. You're at the beach, you use beach something. Okay. Always check your hashtag first because Instagram has shut down many hashtags because let's face it, I don't know if you know, but there's porn sites. Okay. That, there's porn sites? There's porn sites that have, <laughs> that, have, that have found Instagram and they're putting horrible things on there, right. which I hope my daughter's 15, that I hope younger, well, even her, don't see some yeah. of these things that are on there. So some hashtags are being shut down. And please, so please check it out to make sure there's nothing that you wouldn't want other, your followers to see on there before you use it. The design ones mostly are pretty safe for now. There's been some other ones that have been shut down because of, because of um, bad content. Yeah. Okay. So, but yes, yes, I use hashtags. Yes, I sometimes mostly use all 30. For my dog, I use Astro and let, like all the dog hashtags. Okay. So you change them up for whatever your photo is. Um, people ask, do I put them in the caption or do, do I put it underneath with a dot, dot, dot? Right. So I put some in the caption and those are the ones that I change up. So I might do 10 in the right. caption and then I'll put 20 with a dot, dot, dot in the comment below. And why people do that is it, is it gets buried. It doesn't look like you're so desperate <laughs> to get followers. Well, because the more hashtags you put, the well, more you, desperate people, looks, or? Well, I don't know, does it? I don't, I don't, I don't think badly people, because there's big, beautiful accounts that I follow, and I can name a few that use all 30, and they're growing their following by okay. leaps and bounds, and I don't think anything of them. They're just smart, I think. They're just smart. Okay. Um, and what's then, the dot, 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 sorry, that's in the comment? You yeah, so the... what the dot, dot, does, dot does is if you only have the one comment, which is your hashtags, you won't see it because of the dots. Right. It'll be hidden. Okay. Because that's the way Instagram works. It doesn't show the whole comment, it just okay. shows the beginning of the comment. Right, okay. But most times you're going to get comments on your feed, it'll get buried anyway. So my last one I had, I don't know, 25 comments. So that my hashtag comment is still there, but it doesn't get seen. Unless people are going to go back and read all the comments. I don't think people have time for that. Right. Maybe they do. Unless they're stalking um, you. Yeah. Oh, I don't, can we talk about stalking for one second? Yeah, we sure can. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're yeah. jumping. What are we doing for time? Okay. okay. So don't stalk people. And I'm saying this, and I'm, I don't want to <laughs> shout anybody out, but um, I got some new followers in the last few days, and only only like the last few photos, like the last week of people's photos. Don't go back a year or two and like and comment on the old photos. Right. It just looks stuck. Right. I don't know. I, I would take that as a compliment. I'd be like, because uh, I know people too sometimes go through my Facebook and then. I'm like, oh my God, I posted that three months ago. Now someone's obviously just checking out my feed for 10 or 15 minutes. But you're saying... Well, three worry. months is okay, but I'm talking like three years. Right, right, right. I'm talking like, why are you going back? And they're horrible photos. And, right. But there's people, yeah. So I would say, even when someone likes your... So what I try to do... We haven't talked about likes. There's so much to talk about. I told so you. So with <laughs> likes, I try to like back everybody that likes my photo. Not always. If I have 900 likes, that's not going to happen. But if it's less... I mean, you try to like that they like your like... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. There's two likes you can do. We're confusing okay. people. No. So if someone likes my photo, I'll go to their account and like their last photo if it was in the last 24 hours to a day. Okay. If, if they posted like a week ago, I'm not going to like it. That just... My nephew, my teenage nephew told me that. Auntie Van, that looks stalkerish. So, right, okay. so I don't like what they say because they're so... They're so they're in tune. Hip, they're they're so all, in right? tune with this. So don't okay. go back and like something a week old. He okay. told me because I was doing that. Right. So if so, someone, so just so I get this right, if someone likes a picture that <coughs> I put on, 
then I go back to see who that person was and I like a photo that they yeah. did. I think and that's just again the engagement and it's like, oh, reciprocality. Like yeah. Yeah. Right. It's it's engaging. It's it's also commenting on theirs. If someone comments on my photo, I will say thank you for your comment. Unless there's like I've had a hundred comments on a picture and I can't go in and like a hundred people hard. individually. Yeah. So I group them together. Thank you. Go at 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 Okay. Um, I won't add them all. I was going to say, do you, can you cut and paste that too? Like, can you, can you, you can't, you have to write in at so-and-so, at so Well, so. there's also a little trick. Can I show you a trick? I didn't know. Yeah. My daughter showed me this trick. Okay. Okay, so if you're, I don't know if it's hard to show. Okay, so, um, how do we do this? Okay. Uh, anyways, right, you don't have to type out somebody's name. If you're in a comment, you don't have to type out Kim Power Style. You just put, you just click on their name and it will populate in your comment. Did you know that? No. Don't ask me. Okay. No, I did not know so that. If so you click not, on their name. Yes. So for example, okay, I'm going to write a comment. So somebody just said, oh, so exciting. So rather than typing in Foxy Oxy, who's following me, I would click on Foxy Oxy. Just click on it. Oh. Oops. No, that, I, that was a hard click. Give you a soft click. Oh, of course it's not while we're live, not working. Hold on. So you're supposed to click yeah, on so it. Yeah, so I'll be clicking What about hold okay. down? What about hold nope, down? No, it's just a... Yeah. Okay, so hold Thank it. Thank you. So just hold it down, not just a click. So I rather than typing in Odom Interiors, I just held down our name and it pops up. You don't have to type them in all the time. And that's, that's way a know. quick way that's to a respond. Time saver, right? Time saver. Everything takes time. Yeah, because yeah. if you were typing in all those names of those fifty people to, yeah. to thank them for their comment, it would take forever. But this you just hold down their name, it comes up. Hopefully that was new to you. That I learned that just uh, about a month ago. And it's a time saver. But yes, engage, thank people that comment, especially ones that leave long comments. Yes. Take the time to, to thank them for their comment. Go back to their feed and look at their photos and uh, comment on theirs as well. And if you like their feed, then you can like them, right? You can like them. You can follow them follow if you them, want follow, to. Follow, let's yes. just say. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that was good. Thanks for that. Um, can we just see how, how you do in medicine? Yeah, there's you okay? a few questions. There's a few questions? Madison is multitasking. She's doing so well. And I can't look at the live feed because as soon as I click on the questions, then we hear ourselves back because there's about, a, I don't know, a 30 second delay. So okay. um, do you want to let us know if you can there? Yeah. Should we take the dog? Do you want us to take her for I'll a little bit? I'll take her. Why don't we hold her for a bit? She's really cute. Watch your microphone, huh? Oh, I can't go for You've been giving her treats. Oh, that's her food. Oh, yeah. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm learning so much because I really don't know anything about okay. Instagram, really. So it's been really exciting for me. Um, Okay, Madison, let us know. Would when you recommend going through our Instagram and deleting pics in order to make our feed more cohesive? Okay, so the question was, I'm just going to repeat it, would you recommend going through our inst your own Instagram feed and deleting any pics that maybe don't resonate with your brand or aren't as cohesive as what you want them to be in the feed overall? Absolutely. I've done that myself. I still have to go back and delete some from the very beginning that were too saturated, the photo, or it was a picture of a meal. But I kept it for some reason. Maybe somebody commented, I want to keep it. But yes, definitely go, um, what's the Good word? One. Just uh, go through your feed and um, delete. Okay. Yeah, delete, for sure. Perfect. Do you know who asked this question? Um, that was Wendy. Wendy. Great question, Wendy. Okay, mm -hmm. and Thanks, another Wendy. question? Um, is it redundant to tag and at? Is there a reason to do both? Um, so the question was, should I tag and at? Is it redundant? Should I do both? Yes, do both. I think if you're tagging another designer or a brand, well, the brands actually no, because if you look at my last photo, I tagged the brands, but I didn't add them, because then your caption gets really big. But if it's a designer, I, and if you go back, um, if you go quickly to my feed, and go to the like 10th, or no, sorry, the photo of this kitchen, it's Benjamin Dong's work, I love his work, so I actually put him in the caption, I put at Benjamin Dog, Dong, and I also tagged him. So I think if you're doing um, sharing a designer's work, it's best to add and tag. So that way people, cause not everybody knows to click on the photo to see the tags. People don't know that. So they won't know who the designer is. So in that case, I would always add and tag. Brands, maybe just a tag, not an add because your caption could get too busy. Okay. Thank you for good. that. That's a good question. Yeah, perfect. Um, what do you think about posting quotes? 
Oh, I love quotes. In fact, I have a hashtag called, well, you can create your own hashtag. So for example, mm -hmm. for your business, I have hashtag Vanessa Francis That's design. Point, point, I forgot yeah. to mention that. But I also have hashtag decor happy word. Now I haven't been too active with it, but if I do post a quote, I love quotes. I have them in my People house. People love quotes, right? People love quotes and yeah. they're so motivating. And I was going to post one yesterday. So yes, post um, quotes are great. I wouldn't do it too often, like once a week at the most. I see some feeds where it's every other picture, and I think as a designer, that's too many quotes. It should be more your work or something work-related than a quote. I, I think a quote once a week, once a month maybe even. Mm -hmm. But quotes are great. I love quotes. Yeah, good one. And again, yeah. that it looks clean, right? That it's not yes. like, a, like a good backdrop, just nicely written, not like too crazy with lots of stuff going on. Well, or depending on your aesthetic, too. Well, that's another point. You can cr take a quote, and you can create yourself in an app. There's different apps where you can do that create your own quote background. The one I use is called, ooh, running out of time. Can, can we go over time? We probably, yeah, okay. we could probably do it in Canva too. I, I know I'm familiar with Canva. That's how I create a lot of my graphics for, for okay. Facebook, YouTube, and, and my blog. Mm -hmm. So you can, and it also lets you resize things in, in Instagram. Right, but the two I've used are a beautiful mess, ABM app, and Word Swag. So that's ABM, well, I won't show this, it shows online. So ABM and Word Swag. So you can actually take a quote and put it in there, choose your background, and make that yours. But always um, put the person who's, who, who created the quote, if it was Maya Angelou or whoever the quote, or, yeah. or Miles Red, the designer, put their name. Whoever said the quote, make sure their name is in it so it doesn't look like you, that you Our came up with that quote. quote. Yeah. And let's talk about credit. Well, that's a big one, too. I want to talk about credit as well. So um, quotes are good. Can we talk about credit right now? I'm getting really excited. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm happy you're, I'm you just take it away, girl. Okay, you take it away. Half the time. It is. We just run over time. But you know what? We're live. And if people want to follow in and if they want to, if they can stay, stay. If not, you can always watch it later. So yeah, let's talk. If you're happy okay. to stay, yeah. I'll just start to tell stories either. See? Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's talk about crediting first. Well, first of all, did we finish hash? I think we finished hashtags. Yes, we did. Okay. So, um... Sorry, what was we talking about? You want to talk about giving credit. Credit, yes. yes please. Okay, please, please give credit. I've mentioned it a million times today. I am, if you don't know who the designer is of the photo you want to post, don't post it. But there are ways of finding out who the designer is. Say you find a picture on Pinterest and you don't know who the designer is, you can take that photo and Google um, photos. You can find out. It can link you back to who that the originator of that photo is. So don't ever post something without credit to the designer. Mm -hmm. I see it all the time, and it's happening more and more. It's even designers are doing it, and they're making it look like it's their work because they're not adding or tagging, and the hashtag is their design company. I'm thinking, that's not your work. Like, it's misleading. It's misleading. so misleading. But and, sorry, and I also said, like, how would you feel if somebody posted something of yours and it got a lot of... You know, it got a lot of comments and yeah. traction, and you weren't mentioned at all. That's pretty shitty, right? That's, That's a really pretty yeah. crappy feeling. So yeah, yeah. And it's happened to me before. Like big accounts have shown my work, and and that people that I know will say, "This is decor happy." Yes. You know, make sure you tag her. And they don't. Like there was uh, an HGTV couple, the ones that got divorced recently. They put HGTV. my photo on there of my daughter's bathroom. Oh, which and is they, gorgeous. But, but mind you, no, it had very negative comments. Wallpaper was too busy. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> um, there was like. I don't know, 10,000 likes or something, but nobody knew it was my work. But I was kind of glad because most of the comments were negative. But always, always... They have very bad taste then, those people that are they following those too. two on HGTV because it's a gorgeous bathroom. If you're not sure which one it is, it's the black and white one and you've got the gold. Yes. Is it the gold or is it the black? Yeah, the brass sconces. The brass sconces. My daughter's old bathroom. Gorgeous. But um, yeah, yeah. definitely give credit and don't take credit as your own. Even if you're posting a quote, for example, mm -hmm. and somebody else created it somewhere else, give credit. You don't. mean if it's, sorry, because you already said that if you do a quote and someone else's quote, then, then write that in there. But if someone else created this amazing quote, then link them yes. to it as well. Because there, there's designers that create their own, like, I can create my own quote, yeah. Vanessa Francis said, but link back to me. Don't, yes. don't make it look like you coming up with that. Or a photograph yes. of something beautiful, and nowhere on there is it saying that that's not your photo. Yeah. So always credit the photographer, designer, whoever you know, yeah, created I, that photo. I agree, yeah. And, but it happens all the time. It happens a lot. I'm shouting out people every day. I'm saying, yeah. oh, by the way, this is Christine W's work, whoever's working yeah. with, yeah. that they're not crediting people. Yeah, that's and frustrating. It, yeah. It's funny because actually one of the photographers um, commented in another group that I'm in, and he said he noticed that his photo was used on Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, Larry, I don't know if you Larry. Know, yeah. and then he um, he basically just sent them, he just commented going, hey, would you mind, that's of an image I did, would you mind just tagging me in it, or mm -hmm. whatever he asked, tag or hash whatever and um, they emailed him back going 
fine, yeah, forget it. We've never had anyone do this before. We're just going to take it down. And it's oh, like, geez, so really? they just took it down. Like, instead of just doing the hashtag and giving him credit for making and it was photo, Instagram? Yes. That's silly. So it's ridiculous. And yeah. actually, while we're on that, I, on House, the other day, I know someone in someone's um, profile, in their professional photos, where it was a picture of my, one of my pictures. Oh, no. So I, I oh, yeah, I was really angry. Yeah. So I contacted the person. I contacted House, and I even wrote an article on House about it. Oh, like, did. from the pro to pro to call out the person. I don't have time for that. No. I don't, I'm yeah. sorry, I don't have time for that. They did actually get back to me, and they apologized, and they said they took it down. And, but anyway, so, yeah, so don't do that. Um, don't do it. That's not, that's not it's nice. It's not cool. Yeah, it's People not do cool. it all the time. Uh, okay, so we got five more minutes. Have we got any other questions? Because we maybe want to touch on stories really quickly. Sorry, okay. guys, I know you have so many questions, and we've, we've covered so much. Vanessa's been so great here. Um, I hope so. Okay, okay. stories. I love stories. Um now, to the question about brand, here's where you could do more of the personal things going on in your life, on your story. So what a story is, is it basically, um, it's kind of like Snapchat, where it's only there for 24 hours. It's, uh, if you don't know what it is, you can, Google, you can Google, Google what it is. Facebook now has it. They brought it. Oh, they do? Oh, yeah, they have it now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, a photo that, or a video that's only there for 24 hours. So, for example, on the weekend, I went to our local downtown street festival, and I took a photo of the crowd and and I and I put the location and the good thing with putting location on there on your story is that other people can see that it's a way to get other fo local followers mm -hmm. because other people can click on that and see who else posted to that that's oh, okay. new okay. um kind of like geotagging which we didn't talk about in, in Instagram but right. um and also but rather than just being a picture of a crowd I also took a photo of a turquoise door that's, you know, some design related. And then my favorite historic home in Milton, I put that on my story. And, you know, house, hashtag house stocking. And so now hashtags are working on, on stories as well. Oh, they are. Yes. Oh, okay. And that's another way to get followers. So oh, hashtagging yeah. in your stories and location in your stories is key to growing followers. I, I got followers that way over the weekend. Okay. So stories are, I love stories. It's quick and easy. You just yep. take a photo, you're at an event. Um, Can I ask, does it need to be as fussy in terms of no. filter, like, or brightening, no. or, no? Just no. There still are, has to look good. Yeah, there's still filters. You can swipe uh, left, and there's, like, four or five filters you can use. I just, there's only one that I use. Our, our cameras now are so good. Yeah, they take great photos yeah. if it's during the day. Night photos at an event don't usually turn out, right? right. And they're grainy, and why bother, yes. right? Yeah, people can't see it. Can I tell you what not to do in stories, what my pet peeves are? Yeah, go crazy, okay. yeah. I don't like when people are walking. <laughs> they're walking, and they're yes. showing their shoes. Unless you have really cute shoes, which I don't have cute shoes. <laughs> but they're walking and showing their shoes. That's why I've wasted 30 seconds looking at your shoes, right. and they're not going anywhere. Right. So I hate those. And Is I, it also because they're walking, and it's kind of bumpy, or, or no? No, it's just, I don't know why they're showing, they're, I'm going here. Well, show me when you get there. <laughs> I always see you walking to where you're going. And I know it sounds, I sound really mean I'm kind of tired I'm kind of mean today. um and then the other thing is that people do is they're on their iPad or their sorry their desktop or their laptop and they're clicking through just a blog post and they're clicking through their blog post like why what do you mean so they're showing they're you showing it you what story? yeah they're showing it in their story oh and so, so yeah. do you think maybe it's more impactful to like show a photo or a yeah. couple of photos on your story yeah, and say, go show. check out my blog yeah I think just show a photo that's me personally it okay. just so it's click 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 and it's just like yeah. But it happens all the time. Like Everybody does it. And I'm, right. I'm sorry if any of you do it. But you can still do it. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> but I just won't be watching it. She just doesn't like it. <laughs> I have my pet peeves, okay? So, um, when, so can I ask you, when you do a story, can you, you're saying you can hashtag yes. a story? Yes, you can hashtag now. Okay, so you hashtag the story. You can add it. And you, it's, is that each photo that you do you can hashtag? Or yeah. is it for the whole story? No, nope. no. A story is a, is a photo or a video. So it's one. Okay. So, for example, I did three, I did three or four um photos on Saturday and I did location, I did hashtag house stalking or house stalker or something and uh, it goes to the hashtag and it goes to the location. So okay. it's good for getting local followers. And also, um, so geotagging is, for example, when I was in Jamaica in the, in, at Christmas, I, I, I geotagged or I did the location of my hotel. So when you click on that, you can see everybody staying at your hotel, which was a great way to, to meet people. And one who has Instagram, you mean? Everybody that Instagrammed a photo and used the same oh. thing I did. So, for example, there were these girls, my daughter and I were looking at these girls on the beach, and we go, who are these? Are these models? But we saw them, oh. photos, and then we were stalking them while we were lying on the beach. 
But right. um, okay. So it's just a way of also growing your following as well, but also stalking, I guess, if you wanted to. <laughs> Which we're not supposed to stalk. No, we don't we stalk. stalk. I didn't um, mean to say that. So, so, uh, so okay, so we'll, we'll wrap it up soon. Yeah. Um, I just want to mention when you're talking about location, because this could be pretty key in terms of finding local clients. Mm -hmm. So how could we use that location? Because I didn't know that was possible. What, what would we do? Like, let's just say we're down at, let's say, our local tile place, and, and mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're taking some snaps, and is it best to create a story and, and then use the location, or is it best to, you know, take that photo and then upload it and hashtag? Like, how do yeah. you, how are, yeah, can you tell me a little okay. bit? Okay, so if it's a great photo, like, I love seeing tile photos on yes. Instagram. It's an actual photo that's right. there, because I, I might save it, because you can save photos now. We didn't talk about that, but you can save photos. Sorry, Ellie's biting my toes. Hey. Hey, Ellie, I know, know you're up. Should I pick her up? Yeah, pick her up. She might bite you. Show everybody Ellie. Oh my gosh, but ahead. she needs to go out for oh a walk, I think. Um, come see me. Come what was I saying, here. Claire? We're talking about location. And if you're out and you, people love seeing people love seeing Oh, yeah, tiles, tiles. tiles. So things like tiles, I love seeing myself. So um, whether it's a tile story when you got home, you got the samples together, or you're at a tile store, I think those photos are great for an actual Instagram post. But also definitely for a story, because somebody just posted, oh, I'm at tile shopping, and I messaged them and say, where are you? I want to know where you are. What is this tile store I don't know about? Right. So, um, um, but for clients, and then you do the location. That's where you. Yes. But then you would put for there. It won't be the location of the actual store. It'll be like the like Toronto. It'll say Toronto. It won't say. It won't say the actual like for example the hotel said the hotel, but this right. probably won't say the. Um, the tile store won't come up, probably. <laughs> Sorry, she's biting you, right? Say hi, Ellie. Say hi. Say hi. You gotta look at the camera. No one's interested in you looking at me. Look, look, look how cute she is. <laughs> okay, okay, I think we're so, done, right? I think we better be done. Yes, because uh, I need to might take get wrapped her. up in this. Yeah. She's gotta go to the bathroom. So yeah. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for doing this today it's and fun. being here. This has been so amazing. I know that there was so much hype about you know, people are, are, are confused about Instagram. I'm confused about Instagram. Um, so this has helped loads. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to upload this video after to YouTube. I'll put a bunch of links into Vanessa's site and her Instagram. Um, and I'll I make sure we let you know. It. Don't worry, I'll edit it. I'll edit it. <laughs> I can't edit the live, it. but <laughs> no. Okay. Um, well, you can't. And oh. then, oh, I can't edit the live, but. Oh. Well, yeah, I can. I can. Okay, yeah, so okay. anyway, we'll do some magic. Face tune me. Um, yeah, so we're going to face tune me. Okay, I'll have to talk to her about that. Uh, if you are interested in really having a, a sit down, a little more information on Instagram about your personal account, um, Vanessa is offering a service where she will offer whether it be half hour or a 45 minute phone call half and hour. half hour. Okay, half hour. Um, and she will basically go through your feed and she will give some critique in terms of what she thinks you're doing well, maybe how you could be improving. I think it's an amazing um, opportunity. So what we'll do is we'll post some information to that, and I'll link to that when Vanessa has that set up. Um, and I think it would really be worth a great investment if you're looking to build your brand and, uh, you know, to make sure make sure the hard work that you're doing is actually getting noticed because a lot of what we do sometimes no one sees. So if no one's going to see it, then what's the point? So, um, so yeah, so we'll get more information on that. I'll get the information from Vanessa, and uh, I'll definitely post it. And yeah, thank you so much thank for you. being here. Yeah, so, much fun. so nice. Yes. Vanessa lives so close to me, and I've known you since I started my career. And uh, so I look to Vanessa. I look at all of her beautiful work, and she gives me a lot of inspiration a lot. So thank you, thank you so Same much. Here. Mutual. Thank you, my dear. All right. So thank we you. will. Um, I'm going to scooch over. I'm going to hit the stop button, and we will see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.